I will have an idea of what I'm going to make nearly every time I sit down to make something, um, even have really bad sketches of it. And in the process of making, I have so many decisions that I get to make. And part of it is responding to what happens naturally and deciding, am I going to change that for like the hope that it could be more perfect? Or am I going to allow something that happened that I find really beautiful to just exist? So do I think there's a perfect formula for a cup? Um, I would say in my mind, when I'm, think when I'm thinking about a cup that I want to make or a cup that I like, yes, I am thinking about certain components of the cup, um, like the size of the handle, the way I want the foot or rim to be. I, I feel as if I have an idea of a perfect cup, but then there's always the component in my, um, in my imagination of the perfect cup that is missing, and that's kind of the human touch and some like indescribable quality that may or may not have been intentional, but kind of perfects it. And so my idea of the perfect cup is constantly proven wrong by picking up work of other artists. Potter's talk about being casual as a, as a benefit. It's like a real, like, it gives life to your work, and I believe it. Like, the ability to think casually about um, making work means being open to something you're not in complete control of and responding to it rather than trying to force it back into where you thought it was supposed to go. Like a short answer, I would say no, there's not a perfect formula for a cup. But for me, like Hannah, there are um, definitely uh, things that I'm drawn to in, in making a cup. I, I think ultimately, the balance could be with just all self-containing balance of what it looks like, or it could be uh, bringing another element of its use, like how does it balance with its use, or does it not? Um, I, I think that it's the art has shown that there's not a per, there's not a per, I mean, like a cup that doesn't even act as a cup for some people is is the perfect cup. So I don't I don't think there is, um, but there is definitely if there was. I think it is that pay very close attention to your to your beginnings and your ends. Like like Bernard Leach talked about like you know taking care of the like if you pay attention to the end points, the middle kind of takes care of itself. And I think that's a great approach to it. I would say if there is a, a bit of a, a a formula, it's probably going to be over the life of making the work. So. Um... You'll notice that some of my work has imagery on it, and some of it I, I kind of think about the form as an image itself. Um, and the work specifically in this show, I started making because I wanted them to reflect the forms themselves and to talk more about what these objects mean. And so they may reflect the form of the object or an abstraction of that form. A lot of the designs, a lot of the, the surface designs on my work is inspired by or can be kind of traced to my home in the Midwest and in Nebraska, and then also my home in the South. So my whole family pretty much lives in, in Nebraska or in the Midwest, and so it's some place that I kind of pilgrimage to once or twice or sometimes three times a year if I can. We moved a lot in Nebraska, but then finally mom, through kind of advancing her education, she got a better job in South Texas. And so we made a long trip down to South Texas where I lived and then we moved to North Carolina and, and then here ultimately I ended up in Arkansas. And I consider both the South and the Midwest my home. My grandparents are farmers. And so farming and agriculture in the South, agriculture in the Midwest, uh, nature in the South, nature in the Midwest. These are things that kind of ins are, are inspirations for my work. So also the movement, because because my family ultimately were immigrants at one time, like most Americans were immigrants at one time, um, I am kind of using, I'm broadening this travel, this movement to not just the, um, not just my own personal experiences, but trying to reach out 
to like thinking about people coming across from another country, so traveling across the sea, um, traveling long distances across land, um, and I also am exploring for my own personal work the the influences that those immigrations uh, that my family and of others had on the people that were living here. So it was a lot of a lot of movement in, in my life that, that is, I think, illustrated in some of the plots. So functionality of my work is very important in my um, design and making process because my work in itself is very influenced by actual objects that I use in life. And even when I'm thinking about painting or sculpture or some other art objects, I'm always thinking of it in relation to function and where it's going to exist in life. And so whether I'm making objects that, you know, are very obviously functional, like a cup, I'm always imagining or thinking about the space that it's going to fit in. In addition to that, I think that the way that it's used, if it is meant for a specific purpose or I can imagine somebody using it in a certain way, it's really important to me that it it doesn't fail in that process, that it has a comfortability to using it, and that it's able to be used in the way that somebody would expect to use it. Functionality is an important aspect in a good percentage of my work. The ability to use a piece was kind of what got me into getting, like got me into falling in love with ceramics in the first place. I was not a ceramics major. I, I wasn't, it was, it was part of a BA program. I didn't like it at the beginning. But the thing that changed my mind was I was horrible at making ceramic work. I didn't, I like, I didn't think 3D that well, but when the last project came, we had to do wheel throwing and I was making these little three inch cups. But the moment that I realized like, wait, I can, I was getting into drinking tea and I was getting into drinking coffee a little bit more. And I was like, I can, I can use this thing. And that was important to me. I'm making work hopefully, to create experiences for the, the viewer or for the person who wants to take my work home. So I like this idea that this thing can sit in the shelf, it's a mug or a teapot and sit in your cover or plate, and it kind of sits and waits. It's waiting for you to pull it out and think about it again. I think it's kind of a humility in that. Objects can have a way of like defining our lives and helping to um, explain or remind ourselves of you know who we are what we like um, they allow us to express that and then also I think that having certain objects around you allows you to be reminded of other people and experiences as well so the things that we that we're attracted to or that we like may maybe something familiar from our past or something familiar about another person with pottery and artwork in particular allow us to have a an ongoing like interaction or communication or connection to a person that is behind the artwork one of the importances of using soda and i would say more importantly atmospheric uh firing as the as the method to to create the work so when you're using um, what we call atmospheric firing, you're using a fuel source. So whether it's, I mean, whether it's gas or wood, anything that's gonna burn and produce uh, fumes and create heat through the use of fuel. Soda, during the process, you spray a solution of water and actual sodium molecules, whether it's table salt or different versions of salt. You either use it with water or you can just drop it into the kiln. And during the right time of the firing, that uh, salt will vaporize and travel through the kiln and glaze the pots. It's kind of a poetic idea to think of like, oh, this, this, this sodium or this, this like fume is traveling through and landing on pots. But one of the most important things is using a fuel source is that it changes uh, the color of clay and it changes the way clay responds when it's up to that high temperature. We do a type of firing that uh, cools with that fuel left in there. It's called reduction cooling. And for me, it's a really important um, kind of a sense that you are not in complete control of what is going on. And the 
beauty of that is that oftentimes this firing process allows you to reflect on what's happening naturally through your actions. That process in combination with the soda is creating some pretty exciting work. Soda firing has become like an important process and I do like the atmospheric firings. Um, specifically, you get to make work in response to an expectation that you have out of the firing. You are in control to an extent, but you're always responding to your expectations for the future and expectations of what you want to come out. And um, in that, the soda firing process also lends itself to an aesthetic thing that I like that happens, which allows me to make work in a certain way so that I can get a softness in the surface. And um, that is important for me because I want my work to have a sense of like comfort and um, I want it to reflect comfort and I want it to also be very approachable for people. And so visually, I want it to look comfortable and look soft in addition to also feeling that way. So in regards to production pottery, I don't consider myself a production potter. Um, I take a lot of influence from production potters. Um, and so I am influenced by a work ethic, um, like a daily drive to, to get in the studio and to be making and kind of a, an awareness of what you're going to make. Um, also a repetition so that you're able to acquire skills so that you can replicate or um, duplicate forms that you've made. Um, I think that that is really important for a, a ceramic artist to be able to have that level of skill with their work. Um, but I don't necessarily approach my work the way I feel that a production potter does, in that um, my level of repetition is always a little bit evolving, and I work in in a series like that, but the next series is going to have ways that are different than the last one that I made. So if I make a set of cups, you might never see another set of cups that is meant to look exactly like that. Um, the next series that I make, even if it comes close to looking like that, I've already altered what I want it to be and started to move more in that direction. And I feel like I'm always pushing for this idea of something that I want to be there and at every little series that I make is a new discovery about what I want that to be and awareness of where I want to go with it. Ultimately, I look up to the history of production potters, um, but I don't have the, the training to say that I'm one. Uh, because the, the skill sets to become one are not just an easy Thing. They're, they're, they're creating work that has to be repeated to a certain standard, and our standards of exactness are much lower. And, you know, we make cups and they might look similar, but you can find hundreds of differences between each one. Um, and I try to approach each piece as an individual, um, as an individual piece, so that each one at the moment that I'm making it, or at the moment, whether it's whether it's during the throwing process, or the hand building process, or the decorating process, um, that while I've got my time on that, that's a very important 